In this video, we're going to look at some of the recent updates to VS Code. There are several great improvements. If you want to learn more about VS Code and become a VS Code superhero, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. The link is in the description below. This change to the way VS Code formats a document is extremely helpful if you frequently work on open source projects. We can now choose to only format modified lines of code on save. Before, it would save the entire document and this would result in large pull requests because lines that you didn't intend to modify would show up in the changes. So let's go into settings and then we'll search for format on save. We now have format on save mode. We can now choose between file and modifications. There are instances where you want to format the entire document on save. And there's also instances where you only want to format the modified lines. So keep this setting in mind when you're working on open source projects. A fairly new addition to JavaScript is optional chaining. And it's easier to refactor a string to use optional chaining with the new optional chaining refactoring tool in VS Code. So without optional chaining, we're going to check to make sure that we have data. And then we want to make sure that we have data.addresses. And then we want to make sure that data.address.state equals tx. If we didn't check for each state, then we could have errors that could fail if there's no address or if there's no state. So to convert this to optional chaining, we'll select the string, and then you'll see this light bulb pop up. So we'll click on that, and we can convert to optional chain expression. And there we go. Now we're using optional chaining. Pretty simple. With this new setting, matching HTML tags are automatically renamed. So let's turn this on, and we'll go to this HTML document. And now let's rename this h1 to an h2. You'll notice that the corresponding tag automatically renamed as well. Now I wouldn't ditch the auto rename tag extension quite yet. This new setting only works in HTML documents to my knowledge. With this setting enabled, if we go to a React document and try to manipulate some JSX, change this h1 to an h2 as well. You'll notice that the corresponding tag did not change. So let's go back into the settings and let's disable this. And then we'll go into our extensions and we'll search for auto, auto rename tag, and let's enable this. All right now that that is enabled, let's go back in here and we can again change this h2 to an h1. And you'll see that the corresponding tag changed as well. If we go back into our JSX, we'll change this h1 to an h2, and you'll see that the corresponding tag changed within the JSX. So at this point, I would still stick with the auto rename tag extension. If you're a keyboard heavy user or you're using a screen reader, the settings editor is now more accessible. You can use your arrow keys to navigate each setting row and then press enter to edit the focused setting. So we could change this to 18 and hit enter. And now that has been changed and then press escape. And then you can use the arrow keys again. Now there is a new setting that allows to change the appearance of pinned tabs. I'm going to pin this layout file. So I'll right click and pin it. And now it's on the left side. And you notice that we now have this pin icon. If I have so many tabs open, that if I scroll through my tabs, the pin tab will scroll away as well, but it will always stay on the left side. This is the new default behavior. If we go into our settings and we search for pinned, you'll see the pinned tab sizing option. Again, normal is the default, and we have a compact option. With this, pinned tabs only show an icon or the first letter of the editor label. This was the previous default behavior. So let's look at that. So now we just see this icon, no real indication as to which file this is, only that it is a JavaScript file. If we hover over it, then we'll see the name of it. With this setting, as we scroll, the pinned tab will always stay on the left side. It will never scroll out of sight. And then the third option that we have is shrink. Shrink sets the tab to a fixed size, but it shows parts of the editor label. This again will stay on the left side. It will never scroll out of sight. So it's kind of a happy medium between the compact view and the normal view. As you may have noticed, pin tabs now have a pinned icon and we can click this icon to unpin it quickly. Let's pin this again. 
there are a few other additional changes. So for instance, if we're in this pinned tab and we press Control or Command W, this is no longer going to close this window like it would normally do, but it's going to select the last active non-pinned editor. So if I press Control W, it's now going to go back to settings because that's the last tab that I was on. There is a new command to close the active pinned editor. This can be assigned to a keyboard shortcut to close pinned editors. So if we go into our keyboard shortcuts and we search for close active pinned, there it is, close active pinned edit. So currently it's not assigned to a key binding, but if you are working with pinned tabs and you want to quickly close it, you may want to add a key binding for this. Otherwise, you do have to click the unpin and then click the X to close it. There's also a new border color that can be assigned to draw a border on the right side of the last pinned tab. This visually separates pinned and unpinned tabs. Now I've updated my CodeStacker VS Code theme to incorporate this new border as you can see here. So be sure to check out the theme on the VS Code Marketplace or just search for it in the Extensions tab. But for those of you who prefer to work with the panel maximized, you no longer have to maximize the panel each time that you toggle it open. There's a new setting. If we go into our settings, opens maximized. This allows you to adjust your preference whether or not the panel always opens maximized. The options are always, never, or preserve. Preserve is the default. And this option opens the panel maximized if it was maximized before being closed and opens it non-maximized otherwise. So I have it set to preserved and it was maximized before. Now if I press control back tick, it will be maximized again when I open it. So there's a new extension called template string converter, which converts quotes to back ticks when a dollar sign and opening curly braces are entered within a string in JavaScript and TypeScript files. So I have this JavaScript file here and we have a const of a equals one and then a string with double quotes and it says this is demo one. So if I want to change this to a template string, I would have to change these opening and closing quotes to back ticks and then put in my variable. So I have this extension installed and enabled. So if I simply delete the one and I press dollar sign and then opening curly brace, you'll see that it automatically changed to back ticks and then I can put in my variable. Now it doesn't matter if the quotes are single or double quotes. So this is just a great time saver if you're working with template strings a lot. That's gonna be it for this video. If you wanna learn more about VS Code and become a VS Code superhero, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. The link is in the description below. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.